Hi everybody, welcome to the first of a series of chemistry videos and since this is the first video I want to make it clear that you should stop this video periodically take some notes and then restart it and if you need to understand something a little more then feel free to rewind it and play through it again. Okay, so this video is going to be about using a particle model to explain everything. Now, when we're talking about everything in chemistry, we're talking about like what are materials? How do materials stick together? How do materials have a density? Um, what is a KMT, a kinetic molecular theory? So we're going to try and explain all that in this first video here. So to get you started, I'm going to show you a video of these blocks. Um, and what we have is an aluminum block, an iron block, copper, and lead. And they're all about the same size. They're supposed to be identical in size, but unfortunately uh, the lead one got banged up a little bit and as you can see that first one weighed about 90 grams 89 grams now we'll take the iron block mass it and it weighs about 245 grams so already you can see that these are identical blocks identical in size anyway and but their material is different and the difference in material is actually causing the, the mass to be different so the question is, why? Why is it that a lead block weighs 363 grams while an aluminum block only weighs about 90 grams? Why is it four times heavier if you're lead than if you're aluminum? How can identical volumes of material have different volumes? Well, one way to explain that is called a particle model. If we assume that all materials are made up of particles, and we'll give those particles a name, we're gonna call them atoms, okay? It was originally the Greeks who gave them a name, and they gave them the name atom, and I mean, I believe it means chunk or piece, tiny particle. Now, we're gonna give these particles two properties for now, we'll build on that as we go along through the year. The first property we're gonna give them is that we're gonna say all particles are made of stuff. Okay, and that's a highly technical definition, as you can tell. Um, and we're going to give that stuff a name. We're going to call it matter. And matter is what gives things a mass. Okay, and the other property we're going to give these particles is that they all have a volume or a size because a particle has to take up some amount of space. So let's watch a few videos here um, and see what a particle model can show us. So I'm going to use these cylinders, they're plastic cylinders, and I filled them about three quarters of the way with sand. And I'm going to use them as my particle model for now, so a way to understand what particles are doing. So if I take a particle here and um, I stick it on the balance, it weighs about 12 grams, the mass got cut off there. Um, and two particles would weigh about 24 grams. Three particles, 36 grams. Um, four particles about 48 you're getting a picture here every time I'm adding about 12 grams worth of stuff okay so I'm up to six particles 72 grams um, and the more particles I add the bigger the group of particles get so I'm adding more space and the heavier those particles get so I'm adding more mass 10 particles weighs 120 grams roughly so particles have space or volume and they have mass so how does that explain it? Well, let's say I take a different group that only have a little bit of sand, and the first group that had a lot of sand, and I take a look at those two. So I've got particles on the left that have the same size or same volume as the particles on the right, but they have a lot less mass because they have very little sand in them. And the particles on the right have a lot of mass because they've got a lot of sand in them. How does that relate to the metal boxes? Well, let's assume for a second that aluminum is made out of these particles, these little cylinders, but the aluminum cylinders, the aluminum atoms, only have a tiny bit of mass in them. But the lead atoms, same size atom for now, let's make an assumption, but that atom is filled with a lot more stuff, and so it actually has more mass. Okay, so that's my theory. We're going to see if it works. Ooh, well... I just assume that all particles are the same size. Do we have any proof for that? Are there any other possibilities? So let's take a look at that. Here I've got two particles. I've got a ping pong ball particle. Um, I'm gonna weigh that particle. 
and let's see how much it weighs. Particle weighs about 2.2 grams. So there's my ping pong ball. And obviously that particle is a lot smaller than this huge balloon particle. Uh, so if I had atoms the size of balloons, then when I weigh this thing, it weighs about 2.1, 2.2 grams, let's say, just to make life easy. I'm going to say they have identical masses. So in the first video I showed you, we had particles that were the same size but different masses. Now I showed you a different model. Maybe atoms all have the same mass, but they're different sizes. So how would that explain it? Well, if aluminum had huge atoms, then you could only squeeze a few of them in that box. While lead has a tiny ping pong ball atom, then you could fit a whole bunch of those ping pong balls in there, then the lead would have more mass. Is that the correct explanation? We don't know. This is a theory at this point. It's a particle model. We don't know if the model is correct or not. Here's another way to look at it. Oops, sorry. So let's say I have some atoms that are um, different sizes and different masses. Is it possible? Well, here I have some colored balls, and those five colored balls weigh about 11.7 grams. And here I have some metal balls, so I'm going to put them in a container so they don't roll all over. And I zero out the container, so I'm just weighing the metal balls. And the metal balls are going to have a mass of about 27, 28 grams there. So what's that tell you? Well, it tells me that it's possible that atoms have different sizes and different masses. So, although we're going to stick with this idea that all things are made of particles, we don't know much about the particles at this point. So we're going to spend the next few weeks and months looking at particle model and how we could change it and how we could lock in some facts about that model. Okay, so we've got these concepts of mass or matter and volume or space, and we're, they're different. Size and mass are not the same. Can you be big and heavy? Sure. Can you be big and light? Yes, you can. Remember, we had that huge balloon, which was actually the same mass or slightly less mass than the little ping pong ball. So size and mass are related, but they're not the same. Since we don't know whether they're the same size or the same mass, what we can do is talk about a density. And a density is a ratio of mass divided by volume, or it's a mass to volume ratio. And it tells you how much mass is squeezed into a certain amount of volume. So a small density could mean that you have a volume with a small amount of mass in there, or it could mean that you actually have a huge amount of mass, but it's spread way out over a big volume. Okay, density just tells you how much mass is packed into a certain amount of volume. Are these particles just sitting there? Do particles do anything? Well, in Unit 2 this year, we're going to look at what's called a kinetic molecular theory. So it's going to build on our particle model, and it's going to say that all particles, or all materials, are made of particles, and that particles are always moving, hotter particles are faster, and that particles always move in a straight line until they hit something. So there are these simulations you can download from uh, phet.colorado.edu and here's a movie that I made using one of these simulations and we'll be able to see a little bit more about what's going on. So here we have some particles and they're packed in, they have a density because each of the particles has a mass and takes up a volume and I've added more particles so as I add more particles they take up more space and they take up more volume but if you look the packing is the same so even though I added more stuff, the density stayed the same because the, the way that they're packed together is the same. Now I'm going to heat it up. I'm adding some fire here. And as I heat them up, the particles start to move more. And as they move more, they bang into each other more and they spread themselves out. Now I add some ice and cool it down. And you'll notice that the particles move a little bit more slowly. And they tend to pack together tighter and the density gets higher. Okay. Heat it up again, just to show you that as I heat it up, the particles bang into each other a little more, spread out, and their density gets lower. Here I change the material. This is a model of water, and water 
um, has a much lower density in this simulation because although those are particles, there's a ton of empty space. That black region is literally nothing. And if you have nothing between particles, it doesn't have a mass. So this density is much less because the particles are spread out. Okay, and again, if I cool them down, um, the particles will slow down. And here, I stop the video, so the particles stop moving because of that. Okay, summary of my part particle model. We are going to start out this year of chemistry saying that everything is made of particles, that our particles are always moving and colliding, and that the amount of matter in a particle is what gives the particle its mass. Particles also take up space, and we're going to call that space the volume. And when you look at the space and the, the mass, we're going to give that a, 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 a word, we're going to call it its density. So the relationship of mass to volume is called a density. And the density of an object tells you how the mass in an object is packed together or spread apart. Okay, so there's our model and our video, and I'm going to leave you with a parting question. In the video below, I'm going to show you that I mass an empty one of my particles. So I've been using these cylinders as a model of particles, or balloons, or ping pong balls, and I'm going to take a mass of an empty one. So the balance reads zero, and I put it on there, and a particle that has nothing in it still has a mass of seven grams. So my cylinder, as a particle, it's a great analogy. Um, I've used it to explain possibly why those metal boxes could have different masses but the same size. Um, but it's not totally correct. So you can't equate an atom or a particle with a cylinder filled with sand. It's not entirely good. So l use what you learned in this video to, to explain to me why that analogy actually doesn't hold up very long. Leave your comments and answers in the section below. Maybe we'll get a conversation going and try and come up with a better model than cylinders filled with sand. Good luck this year, guys, and I hope you enjoy this video series.